Uh, I have Duke winning it all. Uh, it hurts to say that. I know I'll go to LSU, got Trey, and uh, all these other guys that are really talented on the basketball team. But I have Duke. I just don't see anybody beating Zion and uh, Duke. Um, I've, I think uh, I think Michigan may give them a run for their money. Uh, North Carolina may upset, could have a chance to upset Duke, but I don't know. I don't see anybody beating Zion. That that team is really powerful, especially with Coach K. So. Who do you have bouncing LSU? Uh, I don't. Know. I didn't want to say because I don't even want to bring that. I don't even want to. I don't even want to talk about that right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to say that. Duke don't even have a three point threat. Uh, yeah, I, able, uh, I, I don't know. Our, 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 uh, our, uh, yeah, Ken Reddish has a he – can, he can shoot. He saved him against Florida streaky. State. I mean, most most uh, three-point three point shooters are streaky. I mean, Ray Allen in the, in the league could go cold, and then all of a sudden he hit five threes in one game. So, um, it just depends on what night you catch him. But yeah. Zion is very consistent. R.J. Barrett is, is the – I think he's an underrated point guard. I know they have him playing too, but he's a very underrated point guard. And then they have a, the best point guard in the nation, uh, second to uh, Trey, Trey Waters, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I, I just forgot his name, uh, Trey Jones. Yeah, yeah. So th those those guys are those guys are all first. They they have they have first round talent all over the play, all, all over the court on that team. So yeah. where do they got you playing right now? You, you were kind of hybrid last year. Yeah. I saw you everywhere. Right? Yeah, uh, they, they have me doing the same thing. Um, I just got my uh, feet wet last year, and uh, now I'm kind of getting comfortable and uh, kind of wiggling in and making a making a name for myself in the, at this quarter position, the same position I played uh, last year uh, for the A and M and the UCF game. So it's the same thing. How much is it different of a difference is it with, with or, or not Arden, uh, Caleb on out there? Uh, Caleb on. Caleb on makes it easier for the DBs for the secondary because he's a guy that's going to get to the quarterback really, really fast. Um, he's a he's a freaking of athlete coming off the edge. He's bas he's basically um, a quarter that just plays outside linebacker every every time. Just rushing the passer. Um, he's very quick. He's 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 the first guy that I've seen that does uh, Moffitt workouts and that. He runs with the skilled players and he lifts with the big skilled players. That's much, that's how uh, big of a freak Caleb on, uh, Chase on is. Dave Aranda's playbook getting you thicker? Dave Aranda's playbook has always been thick. It's just how much he gives us, <laughs> how much he thinks we can, uh, how much he think we can uh, process and um, understand and play uh, with. So. He 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 always has stuff going. He actually, he always has a, a paper and pen carries around, just drawing up different schemes and different blitzes. And uh, it's just a matter if he's gonna let us run them or not. Do you think we'll see some different stuff this year than last year? Um, the the three years I've been here, I've always we've always did different things. So I think we're gonna see something different. Uh, Coach Aranda is always learning, always going to coaching clinics, and always watching films. So there's bound to be something different. Early impressions of uh, Derek Stingley and, and kind of what how how he looks physically out there with the big boys. Uh, well, my sister went to school with him in high school, so I got I got the opportunity to see him in high school. So what he's doing now is not surprising me. Uh, dude is athletic. He I I think he's a freak of nature as well. Um, and he hasn't even been in through a, a full just a full process and a full uh, month or so of like Moffitt's real intense, high, uh, high intense workouts. So I can't wait to see him during summer and how he's going to become, uh, how he's going to uh, transform. Cause he, he's really good now, but his ceiling is really high. What do you guys think about the, the big cat coming back? And oh, I, I that? oh, I love big cat. Uh, just, just to line up uh, head to head with somebody and to hit somebody. I mean, that, that's what, that's what football, that's what football is made out of, uh, made from um, guys just line up and, Go one on one. Whoever you have a winner, you have a loser. That's it. So you're you're, you're splitting time between receiver and and DB right now, is it? Uh, no, I'm just playing DB. Um, yeah, I, I played receiver in my freshman year, but uh, nah, I, uh, they moved me back to DB. I'm just playing that. So how how important is it to you for to to provide that that depth that this this team always needs? You know, you need versatility mm -hmm. at DB and in corner. So what? What what kind of depth is is how important is that? Going uh, into? depth was always a huge thing. Um, not only uh because um, for the, uh, how long the season is, 
but it's always good to have people that you can rotate in and out because you want people to last at the uh, towards the end of the season. Our goal is to make it to uh, the college football playoff, make it to the championship. So if you have uh, 15 to 17 guys that you can rotate in on defense alone, uh, you're going to have a very healthy team when it comes to the end of the year.